Hello guys, welcome back. I'm going to be doing part 3 of the 2016 AP Computer Science A uh, for your response questions. Remember that these are released questions um, that were taken this week. Um, I'm sorry, I tried recording these last night and unfortunately I just got a little tired and I started thinking that my logic wasn't as sound, so I ended up falling asleep. So um, here I'm trying my second attempt at this particular question. Now I will say that this is my favorite question on the AP exam. So the reason why I really like it is it's the only one that really doesn't have anything to do with strings. It's a 2D array problem, which is pretty pretty cool. And it has to deal with a crossword, like the same uh, uh, crossword type of puzzles that you would see in a newspaper, or at least that's what I did when I was growing up. So taking a look at this, uh, um, the crossword puzzle is in a two-dimensional array with black and white squares. Um, some of the squares, um, some of the white squares are labeled with a positive number according to the crossword labeling rule. And they tell you what the rules are. Um, so in general, if there is a uh, um, if there is a black piece above or a black piece to the left, then you number it. That's basically how that particular that works. So when you're looking at these particular these things, um, you can automatically assume that the top and the left are black pieces or inaccessible pieces. So uh, um, that's one thing that we're going to be doing. So that's pretty easy to understand. They explain kind of how this particular uh, thing works, and if you already do that, or if you know how to do that, it's pretty great. Now the next thing is, is we have two classes. Cool, um, a square class that represents the individual square. All right, and if I look at this, I see that there is a constructor, but there's really no way for me to get any information out of this. So from what this tells me is, I will be creating squares, but I really won't be using them in this particular problem. So that's what that particular part tells me. I can check to look at is black. So uh, if it's black, it's true. And if it's not black, meaning it's white, then it's going to be false. If, if I have a number, it's going to be called num. Okay. So we're going to take keep on looking at this. We have one a crossword. Okay. This is probably where I'm going to be doing a lot of my stuff because um, because the square didn't work. But let's check it out first. So I have a puzzle, which is in row major order. So that's great. So that tells me that right here. So it's called puzzle and they are squares. So that's something for me to know. So it's a, uh, a 2D array of squares, which are up here. Then I look at this crossword. Okay, that's gonna be put in, the constructor is gonna be in part B and this 2B label is gonna be part A. That's kind of weird, um, considering that usually we make the constructor first, but um, that just means that we're going to need to do a little bit more. And I'm going to review the pre and post conditions just a little bit to make sure that I understand. So when I keep on going, I have A here, the crossword to be labeled method returns true if uh, the square index of, of R and column C are in the crossword puzzle grid should be labeled with a positive number. So basically it's just returning a true or false if I'm going to put a number in there or not. Okay, so the very first thing I need to do is check a few things. So I think A is here, perfect. So there's a couple rules. I'm gonna switch over to Eclipse and we're gonna be doing to be labeled. Now the very first thing I wanna do is I have this array here of black squares. So the first thing I need to do is I need to make sure that this is white, okay? Because if it's black, it doesn't get numbered. So I'm gonna do if black squares R, C, um, so if it's true, meaning that is it black, um, then we're gonna return false because we're not gonna be not, uh, labeling that. Next thing that we're gonna be doing is now everything else after this, we're going to be, um, assume this is where it's going to be true. So we're gonna be first checking the very first two column, or the very first two special cases. And the first two special cases are going to be if it's in the very first row or the very first column. Okay, those are always going to be numbered. So going back in here, if row is equal to zero or column is equal to zero. Now I'm going to return true. Now something I don't remember, and I'm going to look at it in the particular problem here, is let's take a look at this. 
Okay, I want to make sure that the row um, are valid indexes. Cool. I want to make sure these aren't the uh, the their indexes and not um, the row. So this way I don't have to subtract one. So anyway, but since those are indexes, we're good to go there. So we check the very first index. Now we're going to check to see if anything's above it is equal. So let's go. The way that we're going to do that is if r minus 1, I, I lie, uh, I'm going to do black squares row minus 1 column. So we stay in the same column, but we go up a row. If that is black, we're going to return true. Okay. Um, and we're going to have to do the other, we're going to do columns. So squares. And then we're going to do keeping the same row, but we're going to change the column and we're going to subtract one as well and our return true. Now, there's a couple of questions that you may have. You're like, well, what, how do we know that we're not going to go out of bounds? Well, we're given only valid uh, rows and column indexes. So that means we're not going to go out of bounds just by placing anything, but we do have the subtraction in there. So what if we were given zero? Well, um, if we're given zero in either of those test cases, we hit this particular um, return statement and we exit out before we test these two out. So that's the reason why this particular um, code works um, for this particular problem. So you guys don't need to worry about it going out of bounds, going, going with the subtraction. Okay. Um, so that will check it. And what happens if it's both? It doesn't really matter because what ends up happening is we return, um, we will return one or the other. True is true no matter which if statement it came out of. So that's part A. Pretty simple. So let's go and do part B. Now part B, where is it? Is to be labeled. Here's part B. Perfect. Write the crossword constructor. The constructor should initialize the crossword puzzle grid to have the same dimensions as the parameter black squares. So I need to get that information from black squares of how to set the size. Cool. Each element of the puzzle grid should be initialized with a reference to square uh, to a square object. Okay, with the appropriate color and number. Pretty easy on that one. The number is a pot is positive if the square is labeled and zero if it is not labeled. Okay, now I find that a little vague. I'm assuming that they want me to increment the number as we go. Um, yeah, that's what I'm assuming um, because that's how this works, but I feel that's kind of vague. Let's, let's see if they actually clarify. Assume was regardless, I'm sorry. Um, you may you must use to be labeled appropriately to receive full credit. So that's the very first seal. If I see that, I should be using to be labeled no matter what in there just to get at least one point, even if I don't know how to do this particular problem. Um, so I, should, I see my preconditions. There's at least one row in black squares. Cool. And I just look at my post condition, so it's okay. So we're going to do crossword as the constructor. Now, the first thing I need to do is I need to make sure that puzzle is the correct size. So we're going to do that. And we're going to create a new square and we're going to make sure that they're the correct size. So we're going to do black squares dot length. And then we're going to need to do the same thing on the next one, black squares. But we're going to be taking a index value of it. Zero is safe because we're guaranteed to have one um, row at, at all times because it was in our precondition. So we just created one. Perfect. Now we're going to loop through the entire thing. So I'm going to just create my loop here. Puzzle.length i++. And then I'm going to then loop, have my j to control my columns. Puzzle. I'm just going to use i there. Um, you could have used 0. That would work just as well. J++. Perfect. And OK. So now I'm going to first check to see if it's a black square. That's probably the easiest check I'm going to do. So if black squares dot length, I, I lie, not length, i and j. So if it's a black square, 
it is a black square. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting a puzzle to equal a black one. So puzzle i j is equal to new square false. I'm going to do zero. Now I don't think I saw anything in here that it was numbered, but I want to make sure that I'm okay with that. Um, a positive a zero if it's not labeled. So black squares are not labeled, so we're going to make them all equal to zero. So that's the first check to see if it's black. Now if it's white, so if it is white, now we're going to be checking to see if we need to number it or not. So luckily we have something called to be labeled. So if to be labeled, Okay, and then we're going to put our i and j in there to pass in our row and column. And then we need to pass in black squares. So if it is to be labeled, then we're going to do puzzle uh, i j or equal to new square. True. Actually, I messed up. It's, if it's black, that should be true. So this one should be false. Now we have to put a number in here. Now I'm going to get an error because again I don't have a number in here just yet. So I need to start an integer called num and I'm going to make it equal to 1. Okay so this way the first number goes in. Once I put that number in I'm going to increment it up each time I use it. So now we have our else. We're going to do puzzle i and j and we're going to create a new square and we're going to say it's false but we're going to say it's zero because we're no longer needing to number it. So that should create everything that we need to do because we're using our double for loop to go through every element of the array. We check to see if it's black or if it's white. If it's white we need to check to see if we need to label it so we need to use to be labeled and this should be the correct answer. All right. So hopefully you guys like this particular problem because I thought that this was the I like this question because it was very clever in the way that it was presented. So anyway, hopefully you guys did your best and I will see you again when we do problem four. So see you guys in a little bit.